Grade 6 math number 5.8, compare and order fractions, decimals, and percents. What I did was I made a really nice number line, and the top one here shows 0 to 1 whole, and each mark is 10%. So we have 10%, which is 10 one hundredths, 20%, 30%, or 30 hundredths. 0 0.50, 50% is the halfway mark, and here's 1 whole, see? Then, if you look inside this little green portion right here, this is from 0 to 10%. It's like we took a microscope and magnifying glass and opened it up to see what's inside of there. And what we've got is we went from tenths to hundredths. See? So now this is 1%. This one was 10%. This one's 1%. It's 1 hundredth. 1%. 1 0 0.01. One hundredth, see? And then we can see that this mark right here, this 0 0.10, is actually this one here. And this is what it looks like inside of that little tiny green space. Then in this little orange space inside the hundredth, what you do is you open it up and you can see inside the hundredth, and we've got 0 0.001, see? 0 0.001. That's one thousandth. One, it's 0.1 percent. So we're inside of a hundredth and we opened it up and now we can see that this mark right here is this mark and we're inside the orange space. See how tiny one thousandth is? And it would be written as 0.1 percent because we're in thousandths. We need a decimal point there, see? All right, well we're going to compare fractions and decimals and percentages to each other and it's easier to convert them all to one form. So if we have 22%, 13 hundredths, and 0.47, 47 hundredths, if we move them all over to decimals, then the 22% becomes 22 hundredths, the 13 hundredths becomes 0.13, 13 hundredths, and this one is already as a decimal. So now it's easier to put them in size order from small to large. We know 13 is smaller than 22, which is smaller than 47. See? If we have 7 twentieths and we need to compare it to 30%, well, it's a good thing that 20 is very compatible with 100 by multiplying it by 5. We multiply the 7 by 5 and it becomes 35 over 100 or 35 hundredths or 35%. So we know 35% is bigger than 30% by 5%, isn't it? When we compare only two forms, put them into the same form. It doesn't have to be decimals. We don't have to turn both of these into decimals just because that's what we did up here. Turn this one into a percentage. And then you can compare them easier. Just make apples to apples, okay? Now, when we put them in order from least to greatest, and we've got 0 0.1 or and an eighth and 12% and 1.2 or 1 and 2 tenths, make them all decimals first. The 0 0.1 is already a decimal, it's already done, and so is this one, so we don't have to worry about them. But the 1 eighth is going to be the one that's going to give us the most problems. And it's not even that big of a problem because all we have to do is you put the 8 as the divisor and the 1 as the dividend. Now what I did, because I wanted to show how close it was to 100%, I just added zeros at the end and made it 10 over 80. So we're really close to 100, but we can't convert it yet. So I put the 80 into the 10, and I had to add a decimal point and a bunch of zeros to do it. Because 80 can't fit into 10 by itself. So I raised the decimal point up because it doesn't fit into there, and that's where the decimal point goes. The 80 can't fit into there. And I said, how many times can 80 fit into 100? Well, one time. 80 times 1 is 80. So I wrote the 80, and I did the subtraction, and I got 20 right here. See? I added another 0, and I said, how many times can 80 fit into 200? Well, 2 times. It's 160. So I did the multiplication, I did the subtraction, and I got 40. I added another 0 and dropped it down. How many times can 80 fit into 400? 5 times. 80 times 5 is 400. So I know it's 0.125. That's what 1 eighth is. So now I can put that off to the side. 12% is 12 over 100. So I know it's 0.12.
Now I can put them in order. What I did, because they had all different uh, amounts of numerals to them, I added zeros to help my eyes. Since 0.125 had three digits, I gave them all three digits after the decimal point. Now it's really easy to see which one's big and which one's small. 100 is smaller than 125, 120 is smaller than 125, but 1 1.200 is way bigger, so that's going to be the biggest. Then I put them back to their original form. I know that this is going to be first, and that was written as 0 0.1. The 12% was 0.12. See? So that's the next one. The 1 eighth was 0.125, so I know that's the next one, and then the 1.2 was last. So you can't leave them in the order that you fixed them to try to find the order. You have to put them back to their original order, see? Because that's what it asked you to do, is put these in order, not your converted ones, see? All right, the other thing we need to make sure of is which direction to go. Are you supposed to go from least to greatest, or most to least? You don't want to do all that work of getting them all converted and figuring out which, you know, which one's bigger, which one's smaller, to find out you went the wrong way. Ugh, that would be a pain in the neck, wouldn't it? So, to change a fraction to a decimal like we did with the eighth, you put the denominator as the divisor and the numerator as the dividend, and it'll look crazy that you're going to put this big, huge denominator into this tiny little numerator, but we just add a decimal point and zeros to do it, and we know that 1 eighth is equal to 0.125. See? For 1 fifth, we put the 5 into the 1. All we had to do is add a decimal point and 1 zero. And 5 goes into 10 two times, and we know that 1 fifth is equal to 0.2. And we know that we can add a zero onto the back of that if we wanted to. We could say it's 0 0.20 if we wanted to. Because we can add as many zeros as we want on that side of the decimal point, right? All right, look at 1 seventh. I did 1 seventh, and I've had the 7 as the divisor and the 1 as the dividend, and it kept going and going and going. And then when I finally got to this one, to the 7 times 7 is 49, look what happened. I got a 1 again, which is this one. And if I do that 1, the next one's going to be a 4. And if I do that 4, the next one's going to be a 2, and it's going to start repeating and repeating and repeating. So, sometimes we can get caught in a circle. When the decimal starts repeating, it's called a non-terminating decimal. We just put a bar over the top of the numbers that are repeating. It's called a vinculum. We put it over the part that repeats. So we could round 1 7th to 14 hundredths, but 1 7th does not equal 14 hundredths. It's approximately 14 hundredths. This sign means approximately, the two, two little wavy, it looks like a wavy equal sign. When we do one-third, we try to put three into 1.0. It goes in nine three times, and three times three is nine. And then we get a one-zero again, and it's going to keep being 0.333. So 100 cannot be split into thirds evenly because we get a repeated decimal going into 33333 constantly going back. So all we have to do is put the bar for the repeating decimal over the number that repeats and just stop there, okay? Two-thirds will do the same thing as 0 0.66666, see? Because it's just double this, so it's double the three. So, if we have three thirteenths and we do the division and put 13 into 3.00000, what happens is we end up with 0 0.230769. We can round this to 0.23. But if we do, we need to do the approximate sign, the wiggly sign, see? Because it doesn't equal that 23 hundredths. It's approximately, because this is what it really equals, see? So we could say it's approximately 23%. Five ninths comes out to eight fives before it hits a six. And we can round it to 0.56, but then we need to use the approximate sign saying it's approximately 0.56 or approximately 56%, see? So it's not that difficult to compare and order them. Make yourself a number line. 
a nice big number line so that you can try lining them up on the number line. And remember, if you've got a list of them to convert, put them all into one form. Put them all into decimals. If you've only got two to compare to each other, pick percentages or decimals because that way you can just turn the fraction into a percentage or a decimal, okay? And remember, sometimes the fraction will repeat when you try to do the fraction to the decimal change, okay? And to not worry about it, just put a bar over the part that repeats, okay? See you next video. Bye.